think ketamine, it's a, sometimes it's a good approach to understand it historically. This stuff is a cousin of PCP structurally, right? Mm -hmm. And in the 50s or 60s, you know, they were looking for a sort of an anesthetic. Uh, and the issue with ketamine, let's put PCP aside, was uh, this, that you have an emergence reaction. It's It's technically what's called a disassociative anesthetic. And by that disassociation, you can deal with pain and memory uh, because anesthesia, you want people to forget all this uh, stuff. Uh, they didn't like it so much because, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's a um, um, resurgence reaction when people wake up, especially adults, right? Yeah. Uh, and let me actually take that back. This was the case with PCP and it moved off the table really bad, but it ended up also happening with ketamine. Okay. So you, you go, go through and you mentioned in the nineties, there was also a substance abu of abuse in the seventies, right? But ketamine, uh, uh, I've used often uh, over the years. It was always great for children because it's a fast on, fast off and it works. Let's say you're four or five years old and you got this big gash in your leg. Yeah. I like ketamine because it takes them out in that K hole and we're just like, uh, and, uh, you know, the airway is pretty much protected. You do your thing. They wake up. They don't have that, uh, waking up reaction and where they go kind of ballistic. And it's very uncomfortable for an adult when they do that and they can get violent. Mm -hmm. But it's always been a substance of abuse. So that is what the history of ketamine is coming up to now. And it is only natural within our social milieu that you're going to start to get abuse, misuse, and addiction. And you're absolutely right. And it seems like it's even grown more than I thought. More than ever.